True or false? All surveys are created equal. The answer? False. The way that you ask a question can influence the quality of the response that you get. To get meaningful conclusions from the data you collect, you need to ask the questions in the right way. Answers to questions on a survey are generally considered to be made up of two components. First, information about the true value of whatever is being asked about. And second, error resulting from a lack of reliability or the presence of bias in the question itself. Reliability, which we'll discuss in this video, is a description of the random error in the answers to questions on a survey. Random error is called random because the errors are not systematically in one direction or the other. Bias, which we'll discuss in a later video, is a description of systematic error in the answers to survey questions. Let's think of reliability as a signal-to-noise ratio using listening to music in a crowded room as an example. The signal is the measure of the concept, like the music you're trying to listen to, while the noise is the variability in measurement not related to the concept, like people talking around you. If someone asks you what the lyrics of the song are, the accuracy of your answer is likely going to depend on the amount of noise in the room, whether your attention was distracted by the conversation next to you, how good your hearing is, how familiar you are with the song, and how specific your answer needs to be. If you were surveying the people in the room about song lyrics, you would want to minimize the noise and distractions so that everyone could hear the music. Good survey design seeks to anticipate these sources of noise, error, and control and minimize them. As a researcher, one way to check for noise is by evaluating the reliability of the survey questions, by assessing the reproducibility of the same measure over time or across individuals. In this video, we're going to talk about two different ways of measuring reliability, stability and equivalence. We'll go over each of these and talk about tests you can use to ensure your questions have stability and, when appropriate, equivalence. Stability refers to whether the same person gives the same answer consistently at different points in time, assuming no real changes have occurred. Let's pretend we want to learn more about a person's level of anxiety. In order to ensure the questions we ask are stable, we would want to ask a person to rate the extent to which they agree with a statement like this at two time points. So one way of measuring the stability of a survey question is to ask the same person the same question at two different times. The idea here is that if there is random error in a person's responses to the question, it will be of a different magnitude and or direction depending on how it's administered. By comparing answers across multiple administrations, you can see evidence that it exists and how much influence it has. If a question has good stability, you should receive about the same answer both times you ask it. Asking the same question at two time points is called test-retest reliability for obvious reasons. The closer the answers at each point are to each other, the more stable the question is and the higher the test-retest reliability is. In other words, someone who says they almost always worry too much when asked the first time should have the same answer the second time if the question is stable. So how do you measure test-retest reliability? usually by using a measure of association, such as a correlation coefficient, between the answers you get the two times you ask the question. Remember that correlation coefficients range from negative 1 to positive 1, with the value of 0 representing no association, the value of 1 representing a perfect association. An item with good reliability will have a correlation coefficient between 0.7 and 1.0, you don't want to get a negative value when you're measuring reliability. Test-retest reliability is just a method of measuring reliability, and like all measures, it's only as good as the way it's used. So what do you need for test-retest reliability to be a good measure of stability? Well, for one thing, whatever you're measuring cannot have changed. If it has, then a low correlation may just indicate that the true value has changed, not that your measure is unreliable. So using the same anxiety measure, you may want to find out the state of someone's anxiety by asking whether they agree with the statement, I am worried. You may get different responses simply because they were worried the first time you asked, but not the second. This is a problem with this approach to measuring reliability. 
How do you minimize the risk that this would happen? Often by reducing the amount of time between the two times you ask the question. Less time, less chance that something will change in the interim. But there's a problem with this as well. Can you see what it is? While you may want to minimize the chance that what you're measuring has changed, you also want to minimize the chance that a person simply remembers what they told you and gives you the same answer again. If this happens, you'll get a high correlation, but it won't be because the question is reliable. Those may sound like tricky problems to overcome, and sometimes they can be. But in many, many cases, they can be overcome with good test-retest design, and you can get a good estimate of stability. Well, that covers stability, the first way to measure reliability, but what about equivalence? Equivalence, or reproducibility, refers to the consistency of answers given to different data gatherers. Sometimes, surveys are administered by interviewers, and in this situation, the way a question is asked can affect the answer that you get. Let's say you're taking a survey about your drinking habits, and you're asked how many drinks a week you typically have. If the interviewer asking you is rude or judgmental, could that affect your answer? Of course it could. So it's important to know whether a question results in the same answer, regardless of who asked the question. A question that produces equivalent responses when asked by different people should receive about the same answer, regardless of who asked the question. The most common method for assessing the equivalence of answers to the same question is by estimating inter-rater reliability. To assess inter-rater reliability, you have two or more different interviewers ask the same question to the same person. The closer the answers are to each other, the more equivalent the two interviewers are. So how do you measure inter-rater reliability? The same as measuring test-retest. By using a measure of association, such as a correlation coefficient, or, more frequently, something called a kappa coefficient, which is a measure of association for categorical responses. Like correlation coefficients, kappa coefficients range from a value of 0, representing no association, to the value of 1, representing perfect association. An item with good reliability will have a kappa coefficient, or correlation, between 0.7 and 1.0. What do you need for inter-rater reliability to be a good measure of equivalence? Well, the same things as for measuring test-retest. What you're measuring cannot have changed, and the people being interviewed can't simply remember what they said before. In addition to these, you also need for the interviewers to ask questions in the same way. Usually, okay, pretty much always, this means training your interviewers in the proper interviewing technique. It also means keeping tabs on your interviewers as they're in the field to make sure that they keep asking the questions in the same way. Frequently, when you read reports from studies that used interviews, you will see that investigators measured inter-rater reliability before the study started, when the interviewers were being trained, and then reassessed it as the study went on to assure that the interviewers weren't starting to drift apart in the way that they asked the questions. Both uses of inter-rater reliability are very important. For now, just remember that creating a good survey is like finding a good friend. You want one who will be consistent and reliable, no matter what the circumstances. Be sure to check back for more videos from your reliable friends here at the University of Texas School of Public Health. And don't forget, how you ask matters.